Also tonight, more and more communities are test driving autonomous cars. But in California, a legal loophole lets driverless vehicles avoid any penalties for traffic violations. Bagad Shaban from our Bay Area NBC station investigates. Driverless cars have run red lights, crashed into other vehicles, even swerved into wet cement and other construction zones. Plus, these so-called robo-taxis can't exactly take orders from police. Sir, there's no one there. So when traffic laws are broken and there's no one behind the wheel, who gets the ticket? In Texas and Arizona, where driverless cars are now common in some neighborhoods, companies that own the vehicles can be fined, but not in California. Even when driverless cars break the rules of the road, we've learned there's not much law enforcement can do. Here in California, traffic tickets can only be written if there's an actual driver. So no human, no fine. We are very much in the wild west of a legal gray area when it comes to driverless cars. California attorney Michael Stevenson has been representing car accident victims for more than a decade. Laws are going to have to change. Right. They absolutely are. What we really need is an overhaul, a new set of laws for driverless cars. It was August when California regulators gave the green light for GM's Cruise and Google's sister company Waymo to expand and start collecting fares as they shuttle passengers across San Francisco. But just two months later, the California DMV determined Cruz posed an unreasonable risk to public safety. Cruz saying, the most important thing for us right now is to take steps to rebuild public trust, even if it means doing things that are uncomfortable or difficult. The company pulled all 400 of its driverless cars in the U.S. off the road. Cruz declined our interview request. But we did hitch a ride with its main competitor, Waymo, which is now the only driverless fleet in America actively picking up passengers. Not all autonomous vehicle technologies are equal. Chris Ludwig heads product management for Waymo. If driverless cars can still make mistakes, what makes you so convinced they're still safe enough to be on the road? Well, um, there have been examples pointed out where driverless cars continue to need to improve. When we make an improvement once, that's fixed in our system and the whole fleet gets better. And so the technology is only getting better from here and it's already really good. Waymo and Cruise say their own research has found their driverless cars are in some ways safer than human drivers. Neither company has experienced a single death. Waymo has traveled more than 7 million miles, Cruise more than 5 million. But some question if that's enough of a track record since human drivers on average cause one death about every 100 million miles. I think all of us are still struggling to understand whether they really are safer than human drivers and in what ways and in what ways they might not be. Irina Raiku heads the Internet Ethics Program at Santa Clara University and says we humans have been forced onto a sort of test course for driverless cars. Other drivers, pedestrians, cyclists are all of a sudden now guinea pigs. Absolutely, all of us, really, who live in areas where such cars are driving. Meanwhile, California's DMV says it is working to update regulations. So the next stop for these driverless cars could be new rules and more accountability. Begachaban, NBC News, San Francisco. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.